welcome to our new vlog. This weekend we are in St. Ives, Cornwall. The weather is just amazing. As you can see from a couple of seconds ago, it's happening here. I just moved the car so it will cover a little bit with the caravan. There are, there are some good sights as well. Look at the view we have. Just an update for you. It's uh, seven o'clock in the morning. A whole night. The weather was just ridiculous. The wind was pretty strong, shaking the whole caravan. And it was heavy rain. Basically, I haven't slept all night. Magda was sleeping very well. Natalia was sleeping very well, but I haven't slept all night. She's crying now. So we decide that we're going home there is no point to stay here. The weather forecast is um, heavy rain for another 48 hours. We just start packing up. Because when I was looking here, the back was moving itself just by her own. Can you see it? So guys, this is it. Officially, that's the worst trip ever, uh, weather-wise. It's just terrible. We're packing up. Happy that I got 4x4. Four as look what's happening here, all the grass here is soaked with the water. That's the only hard standing area here, so I have to turn around the caravan and just, you know, because obviously there's nothing on the other side. Not easy, but hopefully manageable. And from here we're going to Cider Farm as it's more or less on the way back home. And that's the only thing we can visit today. So here we are evacuating from St. Ives, unfortunately. Um, I'm just here with Natalia. She's still wrapped up from a caravan to our car. Um, here with her, she's getting warm. Oh, so yeah. Martin hasn't slept at all uh, the night. I'm surprised Natalia did because it was a horrible, it was a horrible night. You're stuck already. Car is out. Uh, luckily, we were able to drive off, but you know, we've got four by four. So that was kind of okay. Um, a caravan though is a different story. Um, I don't know what we're gonna do. Natalia? We, I was so looking forward to this weekend. I love St. Ives. I just love this uh, little town and um, wanted to show you how beautiful it is. And um, yeah, uh, maybe we're gonna do it next time. We, we, we tried to get our booking for one night, the one that, that we're not gonna stay. Um, we're going to transfer for another time, um, maybe March. Maybe when it's not raining. So good news, Martin was able to um, turn the caravan around so we can drive off with it. I uh, was able to hook it up as well. So I think we're gonna be good to go. Um, I don't know if you saw the mud and uh, soft ground, it's unbelievable. So seriously, we were looking, uh, we, we were thinking we, that we, there's no way we're gonna get out of here. Another good news, Martin just came back from the reception and the lovely lady over there said, it's not a problem, we can transfer our booking, we can transfer this one night or for another date, which is great. They said, just call them and um, see what they've got available because summer, is already pretty much booked which i can imagine because this uh, campsite is like a little gem it's not on any membership sites uh, you really have to know it to find it if you know what i mean so uh, now that we know that it's here we're definitely going to use it again and we've got one night to use already and we arrive at the farm they have the overflow parking which is specially prepared for um, coaches um, caravans so we park here I already been inside and he told us that we can film there, so that's fine. Also the place is um, pusher friendly. We always have to go somewhere when it's really windy, the weather is not great. But, well, the first reaction is that I checked it online and I thought you're taking me to the little farm where they're pressing a couple of apples and we can sample some ciders. <laughs> and actually, this is like a massive factory with a well-known brand of cider called Rattler and I know it, I, it's in every pub it's in see, absolutely every see. pub it's a very well-known cider so um, it's a massive company basically I'm crying oh don't <laughs> cry, she's so excited <laughs> it's the wind um, yeah so I think we're going to have a great day at the entrance you've got a small shop where you can get some of the ciders I believe there is another farm shop somewhere around 
we're gonna go there as well. But that's the entrance, the counter. We already clocked in. That's the name of the place. So I already had a quick look at the shop, which is not that big, but I already want to buy some stuff, Martin. Uh -huh. So cider I only drink during the summer months and I don't drink alcohol at the moment because I'm breastfeeding. So I'm not that interested in cider, but I'm going to buy some bottles of apple juice and some preserves because they look amazing and sweet chili sauce, which is my favorite type of sauce. What about you, Natalka? No, no special request yet? You can hear how it's bubbling. It'll take um, around three weeks for our yeast cells to do their job, converting our beautiful juices into beautiful cider. Be sure to take a peek in the portholes and watch the magic happen for yourselves. It takes about three weeks for the yeast to do the job in the... What is it? That's like a big can when they start the whole process. Natalka, <laughs> hello, do you want some cider? Do you want some cider? So from the stairs on the lift, we can go and we can watch the people at work. It must be a strange feeling if part of your job is to be watched by other people, other visitors. I'm not sure if I would like it. What do you think about working here and be observed by the visitors? Yeah, it's a bit pressure, isn't it? There's a whole story of how the ciders are made from the very beginning till they bottle it. 5,250 bottles per hour. I can't drink that. Can you? I'm really surprised by the number of people who work here. I think it's more automatic these days. The company is about 300 years old, so I'm sure they go all the modernization process. reminding me the old days, like a 15 years ago, when I was working in Coca-Cola factory in Northern Ireland. So basically that was similar uh, factory, just much, much bigger. Martin, <laughs> when I was going up, I was just telling Martin, it says to keep the button pressed all the time when you go up and I didn't dare to let it go <laughs> because I was too scared of what was going to happen and look at Martin, on off, on off, on off As you can see the weather is not ideal again We just go on the other side on the farm Look at the cool snake, amazing logo, it's really with the balls as Magda said Normally when the weather is a little bit better then you can sit down have a drink There is always also a restaurant in that area and it's a tasting room here well, we're gonna go in a second. <laughs> what a surprise, as far as I can see, there are samples, but we need to pay for them. I'm not sure if that's correct. I will confirm that information for you. Looks like I was wrong, all the samples are free, so... They are. I just need to sign it on my hands, and then here, guys, you've got little plastic spoons. And they said to use every, each spoon, oh. clean spoon, for every single tasting, which makes sense, because you don't wanna, you know, lick it and put it in other other parts you know, so i WD. really really wanted to try the sweet chili sauce how do i get it out not easy oh it's coming first thoughts oh it's got very big pieces of chili perfect combination of sweet and chili all right, so it looks like... Too many to choose from. Mm. Green bean chutney, I haven't tried that. I've tried this as well. Cheers. Look at those glasses. It's not a shot. It's not a shot, no. <laughs> Come on. Cheers. I love it. Today's is 
Oh, no, no, it's too, too strong for you. Uh, guys, we are in a restaurant now where you can actually... Uh, Check this out, this is so cool. You can have a prepaid card. And I guess you just kind of tap it. And this is that how it works? You just prepay yeah. it and then you can drink what you want. Yeah. It's pretty cool. All the restaurant is like an old bar. And look at the fireplace they have from the distillery machine. It looks so cool. I'm not sure if it's working, but it looks amazing. Before we get to the distillery and the museum, we find another cool barn where it looks like the apples are washed here. The machine doesn't work at the moment, but there is a small screen and it shows how they've been washed. The good thing is, when you spend your four pounds in our case to get in, we've got another entry for 12 months for free. So we definitely will be back here another time when we go to Cornwall. The Santa Story stable, the museum Look is here. Here. The Oh yeah, and the fireplace uh, we saw upstairs was one of the first, well, that was actually the first barrel they dest used for destilling. I think so. Th that's called the butcher, and I read online that was the original uh, cider press. Okay. So that was in operation only a few years ago. But that was where the horses was walking around and squeezing the apples inside here. Really cool thing here is most of those old machines in the museum, they got the screens and you can actually see on the screen how they worked before. Some of the workers were paid in cider, not actually mon not actual money. The hundreds of workers died as a result of lead poisoning. That was um, well known, documented. So that's not a fun story. We're in the distillery now, and you come in and you just can smell the spirits. Do you think I will be over the limit just <laughs> by being <laughs> here? Funny, yeah. <laughs> uh, what do they do here, Martin? They do gin, brandy, whiskey. Uh, whiskey. I believe that's yeah. That has to be here. That's yeah. Well, and I guess I, I asked the guy upstairs if when they've got distillery they can actually make any spirit they would like. So every single spirit starts here because that's when they're making the stronger base. We don't really know what we're looking at because no. we know nothing about distilling alcohol. No. We know we can't drink it because it's locked. That's the workshop where they're making the bottles and all the tools are still here. That's all the bottles here. And on the other side, you can see a few tables where you can sit down and enjoy whiskey and all, all the other drinks. There's a small bar area there. And in the middle of the yard, there are some chickens here. Co -co 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 -co. Co -co 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 -co. Customer service is always part of the experience. And in this place, we can really recommend it. At the reception, the lady was really, really helpful. She helped us with everything. She answered all the questions about filming, about vlogging, you know, uh, if it's pushchair friendly or not. She gave us the map. Good experience here in the testing area. Uh, the guy here was really helpful as well. He explained us everything about all the alcohols and all the drinks they have. He also is a um, tractor driver, a tractor ride. Uh, has been booked for quarter to one, but Natalia fell asleep. So he said, oh, don't worry guys, just uh, let me know when she's wake up. Basically, there's a whole tractor waiting for Natalia when she wake up. Definitely, we can recommend this place. When Natalia is taking a nap, we're going on the other side of the farm, because the rain stops at the moment. Ooh. You have to see the cutest little goat. Check this one out. Natalia is also awake. Pick me goat. Hello. He's so cute. Hey baby, 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 baby. Yeah. Right, come on, we are donkeys. Have the tractor waiting for us already. So the tractor trip will cost you ten pounds, and it's really nice addition to the family day. Look who's there! Look who's there! Hello. Natalia just woke up, so we find the man, and he said two minutes. He just um, drying up the seats for us because there was heavy rain a couple of minutes ago, 
and now we're going for a trip. As I say, 10 pounds per, no, five pounds per person. Five pounds per person was the tractor. And he said, normally it's about 25 minutes, but because obviously it's a winter time and it's, the area is less pleased, so they'll be a little bit shorter, about 15, 20 minutes. No place for ourselves. Yeah, that's it. Just you guys. Welcome to Helix. As we go around on our trip today, I'll tell you a little bit about what goes on here on the farm and in our orchard, and also a bit of the history of cider making itself. <laughs> Before I do that, I invite you to answer the cider farm riddle. It won't be the How quickest do we get ride. Fully but grown I'm sure they're dwarf. You'll find out the answer soon enough. Cider was first made here approximately 100 to 150 years ago. Farmers in those days were making cider for their own enjoyment and to pay the wages of the men who worked for them in the fields. The average farm labourer would consume approximately four to five pints of cider a day. Oh, yeah. During the summer harvest time, very likely drinking double that amount, nine to ten pints. So you can understand why it was well known that the farmer that produced the best cider also got the best worker. I'm trying to say you have no adventures. I used to new adventures. <laughs> this was hardcore. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was bad. <laughs> but Natalia is really happy with that. Cornwall was famous. Well, we knew the weather may be tricky, but we didn't expect the hell that, that, that was hardcore. That was hardcore. You can film. I've got Ooh. really wet bum. <laughs> and we've got two hours to, of driving to, t to get home. So. Well, we're going for some lunch first. To the local restaurant. Yeah, to get some lunch and we then get home. heading home. Yeah. Whenever you're in England, or particularly in the southwest, you must try cream tea. And we've just ordered one to show you what this is all about. The cream tea tradition dates back to 11, yes, 11th century. Now we're gonna get really English. Uh, not only I'm drinking my tea with a splash of milk. This is very English, English thing because normally in Poland we drink tea with lemon and sugar. But we've been just presented with cream tea, and cream tea is that's what it, that's what you see normally. You get scones. This is usually served with um, strawberry jam and clotted cream. And clotted cream is a type of cream that actually I've only found in England. I don't think we have it in Poland. It's a really thick. Look at this. Look at this cream. It's madness. So there are two ways of doing this. There's a Cornish way and an English way. Devon way. <laughs> Devon way. Which one's which? I've already forgotten, I've Googled it. I think the Cornish one is the jam first and the yeah. Devon one is jam. So I'm going to do one with the Cornish way, which is jam first. Oh <laughs> That's going to stop your arteries. You know, the Devon way of doing it, and there's massive um, arguments between Cornish and Devon people uh, uh, about it. The Devon way is you spread the cream first. And then you top it up with jam. Now let's see if that's gonna taste exactly the same or even better. Mm -hmm. You must try it when you come to England. Especially in Cornwall or in Devon. The best cream teas ever. Should I say a few words about it? Yeah, because this is another, <laughs> this is a pork and cider, cider farm, ta-da, stew. And this, these are uh, English dumplings. This is a really English thing as well, very traditional. Made out of dough and um, different herbs. You can see there's a lot of meat here and lovely vegetables. The meat is just melting in my mouth. Let me try the dumpling now. I'm not usually fan of dumplings. They're a bit stodgy, but... Mm. Yeah, it's still stodgy. <laughs> All right. I'm having another go at this Cornish and English way of eating cream tea and look what happens <laughs> look what happens when you put jam first right and you want to spread look look how messy it is this is the worst way actually doing it look you just can't really spread it properly whereas if you done it the other way so the cream first and then jam on top you've got nicely nicely made a scone for scone anyway that's for you that mess that mess is for you right as I say shopping time and going away So this is it guys, um, that's the end of our visit, 
uh, Magda is changing the small one just because we've got one and a half hour drive to the storage, leaving the caravan, still need to do some cleaning and then we're going back home. So probably two, two and a half hour and we'll be back home. We'll definitely come back here again. Uh, the tractor wasn't worth it um, this time of the year. We can imagine that there'll be much uh, better views uh, in the summer. Otherwise, the rest was really cool. With the restaurant, we paid 27 pounds, so it's not the cheapest experience, but still all right. We're kind of full now. Car is waiting. Uh, Molly is at the back, so I just need to... I hope she's all right. We spent uh, about three, two and a half hour. We wasn't expecting this, but yeah, and it's raining again.